Here we go then, it's episode 28 of our Let's Play series and I'm back here in Volcano Springs in Planet Coaster. How you all doing? I hope you've had a really good week and since the last update I've been working very hard on this new motion based dark ride. Uh, a little update for you that anybody did miss the last episode, uh, that I did episode 27. Now this is my biggest project to date in Planet Coaster. Obviously it's been out just over a year now, in fact the game did celebrate its one year birthday uh, just the other day. Um, but yes, this this is it, uh, a massive dark ride, a massive haunted themed dark ride, mainly using the scenery from the Spooky Pack, which was the 799 uh, upgrade to Planet Coast that was released, what, just over a month ago now uh, for Halloween. And yeah, I'm mainly using scenery from that to create this huge new dark ride. Uh, yeah, in the last episode, I put in uh, the motion based dark ride itself, along with putting in all the walls and just generally setting the scene uh, for what this ride was going to be. In this episode, uh, by the end of it, over the next 45 minutes or so, by the end of it, there's only a few rooms left to do. Obviously, at the moment, we've only done a few rooms. Uh, by the end of this episode, it's going to be looking nearly complete with the indoor sections, with just a few more bits to do uh, towards the end of the ride. Uh, but yeah, here we go, welcome back. And it's uh, good to be here doing another episode with you guys. I know at the end of the day, I did say that over winter, there's gonna be a lot more episodes of Let's Play Planet Coaster because I've got more time. I mean, I explained it a bit more in the last episode about time and just everything we've got going on. Obviously, you know, with Theme Park Worldwide during the main season, our priority is going out there to the theme parks and having a great time, to be honest. And, you know, I've done that a lot, especially this year. We've done more vlogs than ever before over our summer season over the summer period and it has been fantastic uh, but we're now back into closed season a lot of the parks are closed and as much as I've got quite a few trips lined up for abroad and uh, you know I've got a lot more time to play Planet Coaster Anyway, let's talk a little bit about the scene that I'm working on just here then Of course, I did show you the attic which was the last scene that I worked on in episode 27. This is a continuation, if you like, of that. I mean, you come out of the attic and you're into this massive scene. It's the second largest scene that you've seen uh, in the ride so far. That's a lot of scenes, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's the second largest scene uh, that you've sort of come across since coming into this dark ride. And yeah, I want to give it this feel that it's all a bit rugged around the edges, a bit rough around the edges, this one. And that's what I'm doing here, adding these planks of wood all across. It's like the roof sort of caving in, if you like. It's, you know, going be covered in cobwebs and very dark in here very blue uh, style lighting in here you know giving that very cold very dark feel and also some special effects in terms of the special effects inside this ride I'm gonna be using a lot of smoke machines a lot of fog and mist style effects as well uh, which also uh, later on in this you'll get to see I also use some new effects as well I use the rain effect and also lightning in one of the scenes uh, to add to it which is really cool but yeah with these dark rides it's all about the atmosphere isn't it it's all about creating that feel that you're in in these scenes like hey you want to be inside this sort of secret you've come out the attic and then boom you're in this massive scene which is like a another world so to speak with all these different doors all these different choices but you continue on down this corridor and you'll see in a moment at the end of this corridor there's going to be this piano uh, just playing uh, on its own there's going to be no one sat at it just a piano and that'll be the main sort of focus inside this room. Now as you can see there's a lot of space inside these scenes so I'm just going to put loads of random items in there. Uh, there's the piano going in just now. Uh, I want that to be really well lit and like I say that's the only thing you're really going to see inside this room. You're going to be focused on that as soon as you turn that corner and it's going to be there. Everything else is going to be quite uh, dark in terms of the lighting and then we'll have a couple of animatronics over by the coffins as well. Um, but yeah, it's all about immersing you in that experience. I mean, with this, I wanted to make sure the floor was themed, the roof was themed and the light levels were just right. Obviously, there's still a lot more programming to do. I loved reading your comments, by the way, on the last episode. Quite a few people suggested more improvements I could do with the programming of the actual ride system itself and that's some great suggestions someone said about spinning inside the attic scene uh, spinning 360 I love that thank you so much for the suggestion and that's something what I'm gonna do so once all this is uh, nearly complete well, in the next episode I'll go back and I'll reprogram a few little bits and obviously I want to tilt uh, the rider so they're facing upwards in some scenes so they're looking down in others and just generally enhance that ride experience there you go, you can see that scene's probably 90% complete, so I'm putting the roof on there, come back to that at a later date and put all the finishing touches in, and genuinely I'll set the triggers then as well. Obviously you've got all the different triggers 
for the dark ride. Well, for any ride in Planet Coast, you can set triggers. But for this dark ride, I'm going to do them all together. I've put in some of the special effects, but I'll set lighting and all that kind of stuff up once I've done all the theming inside. Moving on then now to the next room that I'm working on. This is the final scene before you actually go into an outdoor section, the first outdoor section of the attraction, which is gonna be like a mini graveyard before you head back inside into what's gonna be like an electrocution corridor with all skeletons and things. That's probably gonna be the darkest scene inside the ride. Uh, but even so, I'm still gonna try and keep it quite family friendly. It's not gonna be, you know, like loads of blood and gore everywhere. It's not like horror, but it is gonna be like a, an electrocution wall. That's about as, as deep as we're gonna go with this really in terms of horror and you're actually going to get trapped this is the room where you get trapped really into this big cage and I wasn't too sure how I wanted to go about it I knew I wanted that you to at some point in this ride for it all to go a bit wrong and as you get trapped and this was the point and what you can see here a big cage and it's lovely really because you come around that corner and as you see from that ride vehicle now going through that spins round uh, this way and you actually get a really nice view of the other ride vehicle on this side as well uh, which works really well so you get a bit of interaction there obviously if you're on the ride if it was real you could wave over to the other riders at that point and um, so yeah I'm really pleased with that you can just see there how the two ride vehicles uh, interact so I'll make sure that I space them out perfectly uh, for that so this here is a like a bedroom style scene what we're going we've got going on however things start getting a bit freaky inside here obviously you've got all these portraits and things that'll be on the walls moving but then you're gonna have a lot of weird things happening in this room more books floating in the air lots of spiders crawling about on the floor in here out of barrels and things obviously you've got the rocking armchair there in the corner as well lighting in here is gonna be quite bright compared to the last scene that you're in. In here we're going to use some purples, uh, some greens uh, to really bring them lights out and also have some chandeliers hanging from the ceiling as well. But you can see me there adding some of the wall cladding in. That's a traditional style old haunted house feel what we're going for with that there and uh, just adding that throughout the attraction. Anyway I'm going to leave you for a few minutes now with a bit of theme park audio then I'll come back to you and talk to you more about the electrocution scene and what I plan to do with that uh, just there.
I really hope you can now start to get a feel for how this dark grey is going to be once it's complete. But building something like this isn't easy, it's a massive project and there's so many individual pieces to put all of this together. And uh, now you can see just here I'm building the electrocution scene. Now I've mentioned this a few times already in this episode, uh, but I just want to state, you know, this is a very family friendly dark ride. I don't want any of the scenes in here to be too, you know, gory so to speak. In fact, there's going to be no blood at all inside here. It's not that sort of attraction. Uh, but this is about as deep, if you like, as, it, as it's going to go in terms of uh, a horror theme. All that's going to be in here is these walls, the electrocution walls. And I really just wanted to use like the, some of the special effects in here, like the blue uh, style lighting and electrocution panels. And just have some skeletons on the side just sort of shaking about a bit. So it's nothing too intense, uh, you know, for families, but it, you know, it's still that borderline sort of horror as well uh, that wanting to do here. And this will be the last indoor scene before you go into two massive outdoor scenes, which you can see just on the top right of the screen there, uh, where you've got all the star cloths. Uh, that's going to be a really nice scene, and you'll also see in a few moments time, that comes together really, really nicely. Yeah, you can see just here you've got them doors again. I'm going to set all that so it all goes in sync with the ride system. Obviously, at the moment, all these doors and things are opening and closing on the ride. The ride well, would crash into them at the moment with how they are. Uh, but yeah, all that's going to be programmed. And again, we could even uh, you know animate these skeletons and the lighting in here. Maybe have the electrocution panels actually come on at different times. Who knows? You know, we can mess about with all the triggers in the next episode and just generally going forward uh, with this attraction. Anyway, a lot of people ask, have been asking me all year whilst I've been running this series, since November last year, when am I going to upload stuff to the workshop? Because I've put nothing in the workshop so far from this because I wanted it to look complete. And there's still things throughout the park that I do need to finish off uh, before I do release this in the workshop. And of course, there's still a few more rides I want to build yet. Um, but more about them rides later on. Anyway, what I've decided to do with this dark ride, as it's going to be complete, you know, probably in a week and a half, two weeks sort of time from this going online, what I want to do is actually release this, the first thing from Theme Park Worldwide, on the Steam Workshop. So that's something to look forward to. You're actually going to be able to download this attraction uh, with the theme in, the ride system itself, all together. You're going to be able to download this and the Steam Workshop in a couple of weeks' time. So stay tuned for that one. I look forward to sharing it. And yes, I will be uploading the whole park to the Steam Workshop along with some of the other individual attractions that have built inside Volcano Springs over the past year. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that it was ready, if you like, to release. I just wanted to make sure it was all finished, really. Uh, here you go, I can add some of the special effects in now. Lots of smoke in there. And then you've got these uh, big sort of Tesla screens going into the side. I wanted to make sure that they were hidden inside the wall so you didn't see the big metal plate and you just get to see the actual electric uh, from that as well. I actually put more of these in and then I think, actually, there's a bit too many and I do reduce those down. Uh, but yeah, you imagine the ride going through here. It's a very bright scene compared to some. Oh, there you go. Compared to some very dark scenes in the ride, where uh, you know, like, so this is a dark scene in terms of ho dark horror, but in terms of brightness levels, uh, so to speak. You know, this is a very bright scene compared to some of the others where there's not much lighting in there at all. There you can see some of the rain and special effects. That's got a really good feel to it in there, and obviously you've got all that pyro down there as well. Uh, you know, at the side, I thought, you know what? Yeah, it looks quite good, that does. And uh, so I do decide to uh, leave that in. Here we go then, moving on to what I wanted to be the most impressive scene inside this ride. You're coming through that door, out of that seat, and you're gonna go into here, and it's gonna be more magical than it is horror. Now, anyone who's been on Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris, or the Haunted Mansion, uh, but especially Phantom Manor, the end scene in Phantom Manor, and the lighting in there, uh, that Wild West style, I absolutely love it. And that's the sort of style that I wanted to go for here. I wanna have some buildings in there, uh, but it's firstly gonna start with this graveyard. And you might be thinking, it just looks like a big, boring, bland room at the moment. Over the next five minutes or so, you're gonna see this all come together uh, with the gravestones. I put some trees in there, I put rocks in there, and most importantly, really put some thought into the lighting uh, for in here as well. Obviously, I've made everything black, I've put the walls black, uh, the fences, the all the star cloth, you know, it's all dark, so you can't really see the fixtures and things in there. It's just gonna be focused on the theming 
more than you are the actual fact that you're in a big show building uh, itself. So anyway, I'll leave you for a few minutes with a bit of theme park music and just let you appreciate me working on this here. I mean, it took a lot of work. There's things that I put in and I take little bits out again, but you'll get to see that. I didn't want to crop much of this out in this episode. I want you to just see how I put all these scenes together and just give you guys a bit of inspiration as well for if you are building your own dark riding planet coaster. See you in a few minutes.
So there we go. You've just seen over the past seven or so minutes, we put in together this main scene uh, inside the ride. And I must say that this is my favorite thing I've built so far in Planet Coaster. The dark ride in general I really like, but this one scene here, I really think it just captures everything what this game's about. I mean, it's a really immersive, very heavily themed experience, and it looks really good in there. You can't even tell that, um, you know, you're inside this big building. The fact that, well, I'm now putting the roof in there as well to give it that full uh, feel that, you know, you can't tell you're in this show building. But yeah, I'm just so pleased with how it looks, and I was putting it together and I thought, you know what? I really think this is going to be my favourite thing that I've built so far. Uh, before, it was the hotel. I uh, really love the hotel and also the wing coaster as well. They're my two favourite things I've built so far over the year uh, whilst I've been running this series. But yeah, here we go, episode 28. And yeah, I've just come to this conclusion that that is it. That scene there, that view, I think it's beautiful. It is, and I love the ride system as well. Uh, and it's all coming together really nice at this point. So I thought, you know what, let's do more of what I've just done effectively. So I want this graveyard to be a bit bigger. Obviously the ride vehicles are going in a straight line down the back corner of the show building. And pretty much you'll see over the next few minutes here, me adding in similar style to what I've just done. However, we do go for a little bit different color lighting towards the end of here. Uh, I wanted that to all be very cold in there. Uh, I didn't want to use the rain effect again in there, but uh, you know, I wanted it to be dry. However, I wanted it to be cold, a bit of a frosty feel to it. With this down here, we're going to start going down the purpley green route as we go towards having this building, uh, which is like going to be a, a little cottage, if you like inside uh, the, just next to this graveyard. Again, you can incorporate that into the storyline if you want to. So when you're putting this storyline together for the attraction, think about that as well and you'll see me start to build that uh, in a few moments time. Uh, after I do that next room, uh, I do do another couple of rooms as well before wrapping it up. I do the station building as well uh, in this episode along with a few other bits throughout the dark ride uh, as well. Also start thinking about the queue line and exit to the ride and where that's going to go. I have to do a little bit of uh, movement. You see that a little later on in the episode a little bit of movement just to make sure that I could fit that in around the ride system itself obviously you can see here just how then in some more bushes and planting inside uh, just to give it that feel obviously I'm using the actual uh, you know the real plants here but obviously if this was a, a real dark ride you would not be using real plants inside you'd be using plastic ones but obviously we're in planet coaster aren't we uh, you know we can pretend that the plastic ones you know, it's not like the trees are going to die because they're inside uh, but yeah anyway as I'm going on with this let's talk a little bit about Christmas shall we it's one of my favorite times of the year I love Halloween I love Christmas and what have I got coming up so at the moment whilst you're watching this episode well if you're watching it uh, in the first few days of it going up anyway uh, me and Charlotte are in Disney I'm Paris enjoying Christmas there. I've not done Christmas there for four years, so it's been really nice to get back and see it all. And we've recorded lots of different vlogs whilst we've been out there as well. Uh, so we've done one from Walt Disney Studios, one from Disneyland Park, which is obviously celebrating the 25th anniversary. We've done a hotel tour, a Disney Village tour, all the merchandise. Uh, so much there is to see from that trip, along with a travel vlog as well. So lots of different vlogs coming to the channel from that in the next few weeks. Uh, along with that, we went to uh, Drayton Manor's Christmas event. We went there as well, so that vlog will be online soon. Uh, along with that, we're going to Stoke-on-Trent Winter Wonderland, uh, which is going to be awesome. High Park Winter Wonderland. We've got our event coming up there on the 9th of December as well, so check that out on Facebook. Uh, along with that, just general other trips, really, to different attractions uh, throughout December, so stay tuned uh, for that here on Theme Park Worldwide. But obviously, Winter Wonderland, for me, is always a highlight. It's the best Christmas event going. Uh, I think now, for an all-round Christmas event, it is brilliant. Uh, however, I haven't done Disneyland Paris for a few years, so I'm really looking forward to all that Disney Christmas magic. And that, yeah, and there right now and seeing it all obviously Phantom Manor is another one of my favorites there it's heavily uh, helped sort of inspire this attraction that I'm building here in Planet Coaster oh wow look at that though now with the star cloths and the lighting um, but yeah Phantom Manor that's about to close after Christmas for a big refurbishment throughout 2018 and um, so that's quite interesting I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, they're gonna do to that but yeah as we move into 2018 it's gonna be a really really big year for theme park worldwide and also just the theme park industry in general General, Secret Weapon 8 at Alton Towers, Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, so much going on there really is at all the different theme parks out there. And comment below, what are you looking forward to most uh, for that, the theme park season next year, which rides can't? 
you wait to get on uh, more than anything next year. For me, it's got to be Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and Secret Weapon 8 at Alton Towers. But I'm also looking forward to getting out to the likes of Liseberg and trying out their brand new ride. Obviously, they've got the dive coaster, Valkyria, uh, which is going to be great to get on. Uh, I'll be there for when that opens, along with a few other bits and bobs out there as well for the openings. But it really is going to be a huge year for Theme Park Worldwide next year. I've got uh, a couple of trips planned out to the States next year, over to America for some things. And obviously, we've got Dubai coming up to kick off the year, a brand new trip to Dubai uh, and Abu Dhabi as well, which is going to be brilliant. And that will kick us off in January. Here we are then working on the building, uh, which is going to be inside the, uh, well, this is your final section, if you like, of the outdoor scenes for the ride before you go back in uh, to a final three scenes before making it back into the station building itself. It's quite a big dark ride. I don't think people realised uh, how big it was going to be. I did say it was going to be a big project, this one, but so much work, so far man hours into this ride, I've put about 10, 11 hours into it just to, you know, so you can see what I've got here and planning it all and putting it together. So yeah, it is a lot of time, it really is, and you don't realise when it's sped up, but, you know, putting all these items down and individual things, all these rooms here have took about an hour and a half each to uh, put together. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'll leave you a little bit more music before I come back to you and talk a bit more about what I'm building in uh, Planet Coaster.
Okay then, so I've just been working on this final outdoor style scene inside the ride and I think it looks quite good. I've put it all together there and put the roof on and yeah, I'm pleased with that. I mean, again, there's bits I want to go back and add to it at a later date, but the main basis of it is in. Uh, obviously, it could open in that state and then I can go back and add little bits to it later on if I want to. Obviously, I still need to program uh, the actual ride vehicle and stuff in there so it lifts up and down and all that kind of stuff uh, so we can tilt the ride into different positions. Uh, and obviously add the triggered effects in there as well. But in general, the scenery items are in. Obviously them doors and things what I've put in just, and uh, you've seen some of the, like the shadow animatronics and things in there, what I've put in, like all the ghosts and things. All that's gonna need programming to the ride itself, along with some flickering lighting in there as well. I'm thinking some strobes in there, and I might even add a couple of special effects in there again as well, like I did in that first outdoor scene that we built earlier on in the episode with the gravestones. And uh, well, yeah, as soon as you come out of the scene where you get trapped uh, in the cage. Now I'm starting some work then on the station building. This is the final room that I work on in this episode and it leaves me with three rooms left to do, uh, which are the one just behind the station, uh, the one where you come out of that final indoor, outdoor scene uh, indoor scene, what? <laughs> uh, and then the one in between those as well, which is quite a small scene. Um, so yeah, I've got like one major scene, uh, one medium scene and one small scene still left to do. Now what I've done here, I've edited the queue line, I've put them steps in just there, uh, which is the queue line itself that will lead into a mostly exterior queue line but with a few indoor sections as well and also the exit to the rides there as well I've put a nice little booth there around the ride operator just shows he's got somewhere to stand and then we're gonna have all these packages and parcels all down the side there as well uh, to block in the stairs I didn't just want to go and build a wall there I thought you know what let's put all these different boxes and different items in and cover them in cobwebs uh, which is what I'll do at a later date with a lot of this ride I need to put more cobwebs in, in a lot of places uh, but yeah just generally give the feel of what this is going to be so you've got the entrance there on the left and the exit there just on the right hand side. I must say that I do really love this motion based platform, uh, you know, what Prontier have put in. They've done a fantastic job of it, it's very realistic. And after riding uh, the likes of, well I've done so many trackless dark rides, now my first trackless dark ride was Ratatouille in Walt Disney Studios at Disneyland Paris. I remember riding that for the first time in 2014 when it opened. Uh, you know, I'm really enjoying it and thinking, God, I can't wait to see what we get with this ride system going forward. Since then I've done quite a few of them now and obviously been out to uh, Florida, I did the one at SeaWorld there, that's interesting, you know, it's quite a good attraction that, I do quite like it, uh, the penguins uh, one, then it spins around, you've got the penguin uh, exhibit at the end, that's quite cool, um, but yeah, in terms of the ride system itself, I just think they're really good and Symbolica, which is now my top dark ride anywhere in the world, I love it to bits. Mystic Manor, I've done that this year at Hong Kong Disneyland. That was gorgeous. That was a really nice experience as well. And as much as Symbolica did just top it for me, you know, Mystic Manor is a brilliant attraction. It really is. And that, using that trackless ride system, that trackless technology, some of the actual effects inside that ride are stunning how it works. I mean, you've got different bits of theme in there and you've got this character that's creating mischief so to speak throughout the attraction and you might not have seen a POV of it I am putting one online on the channel soon so stay tuned for that if you haven't already seen a POV. Uh, but yeah, you've got some scenes in there where they project like a, a laser magic special effect on things. So what they did, they actually have a some cloth which is like on a rope up in the ceiling and then it drops down when the room goes dark for like two or three seconds and then they project like the laser onto it to add this magic stardust style feel to it. Uh, and then lights dim again and then it disappears. Obviously to the rider, you don't really know what's going on with that but it looks so good when you're actually there on it and you understand how it all works. And the end scene of that as well, there's some good use of screens in there. There's not loads of screens, but there is a few. I mean, at the end of the ride, you know, you go around 360 in this room and you've got a big centerpiece, uh, like a dragon in the middle. You know, it, it's gorgeous, it really is. Another one of my favorites, you've got a vase, which is down on a table and it's, it's projected into somehow. You know, it's so clever how Disney do these attractions. Disney will always be the king of animatronics. And obviously, you've got Symbolica, which is a brilliant ride at FTL, and it's my favorite dark ride in the world. But animatronics wise, Disney are always going to win, aren't they? Uh, but what I really liked about Symbolica 
was how the F Talon have thought about everything, like the floor, the roof. I know I mentioned it a lot, and I've mentioned it a lot whilst I've been building this dark ride over the past couple of episodes. Uh, but it's all about what you do to the overall experience. A lot of people, especially enthusiasts, will look everywhere when they go on a dark ride. They won't just be looking straight forward or whatever. They might turn around and look the other way to see what tech they can see projectors and, and, and that sort of stuff yeah and i'm just like that as well i love looking around and seeing all the different things there is on dark rides and that's what i wanted to make sure i got right with this one here in planet coaster and so far it's really coming together i'm enjoying how it is and that's my station building uh, nearly complete just there anyway that's it for this episode i'll be back very soon with another episode of let's play planet coaster it will be 29 episodes and in that one i'm going to be finishing off this dark ride the rest of the interior some programming and also the exterior of the building as well before episode 30 where i'm going to be working on a brand new roller coaster comment down below tell me your suggestions what you think i should build it's going to be a brand new roller coaster it's going to complement this dark ride nicely and sit next to it and maybe even interact a little bit with the exterior facade as well so comment below uh, your names your theme suggestions as well uh, for that and yeah just anything related to our planet coaster series thank you very much for watching I'm Sean Sandbrook, and that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys.